What's the word, y'all? Uh, yesterday we got pump faked by my boy Cobra here, but he's actually there. You see him? I mean, I guess you can kind of see him. That's my boy. He's actually here. And let's pray that he doesn't make noise. See, that was silent, and I like that. So he's here watching um, watching me work, which is cool. One, you know, my favorite co-host. Uh, we're talking about the Clippers and Doc Rivers in today's video. Before that, be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you are new. We're trying to continue to grow this channel, and I can't do that if you don't do those things. All right, so I was thinking going into these next couple days, uh, yesterday and today, that it's going to be a very, very chill day in the NBA world. You know, we just waiting for the finals, just waiting for the finals. And then out of nowhere, seemingly out of nowhere, Doc Rivers gets fired. Now, if you go back, rewind to the day that they blew that 3-1 lead, I sat here in the same set, and I was like, I wouldn't be surprised if Doc Rivers is fired. I mean, that was nothing new. I feel like a lot of people had that same opinion because you don't blow a 3-1 lead in that magnitude. We're talking about a team that was the heavy favorite that was up by 20-plus points in multiple of those games, blow a 3-1 lead, and the head coach is safe. But then it came out after he got after they got eliminated that, you know what, no, they're going to keep Doc Rivers around. I was like, okay, Doc Rivers is a good coach at the end of the day. So it kind of makes sense that, uh, that you keep him around. If you go back to the stories from last year, Kawhi Leonard pointed at Doc Rivers like, I want to play for him. You know, so it would make sense. I mean, Kawhi is a superstar. You keep the superstar's coach if you want to keep the superstar. So when they when they said that they were going to keep him around, I was like, that's no big deal. That makes a lot of sense. And then out of nowhere, boom. But it might not be out of nowhere. I saw this on Reddit, right? And listen, I, I browse Reddit a lot. Um, NBA Reddit can be super cool sometimes. And sometimes you're like, is that is that what we're saying with a thousand upvotes? Uh, but this is actually a really good question that I wanted to try to answer. Somebody posed a question. Did the Clippers, Steve Ballmer, and the Clippers wait until the Denver LA Lakers series was over to make their decision on Doc Rivers? And I think that's an amazing question. Because I think the answer is yes. And here, here's why they did it. Because they were trying, they were trying to figure out: did we really just blow this? Or are the Denver Nuggets that real of a team? Could the Denver Nuggets do the same thing to the Lakers that they did to us? And we found out, nope. You know, LeBron Anthony Davis shut that down quick. Yeah, the, the Denver Nuggets got one game, but that was pretty much it. They got one game, but it was pretty much it. Yes, they were in the series, but that was pretty much it. They did not allow the Denver Nuggets to be the comeback kids like they had been in the previous two series. So Steve Ballmer was just like, maybe the Denver Nuggets are better than everybody expected, which is true, but they weren't up to the level where we should have been blowing two 20-point leads to close out a series. So once they saw that and they saw the Denver Nuggets got, got defeated by the Lakers, that's when they made the decision. And one thing I'm dreading is that I'm going to upload this video and then like 30 minutes after I upload this video, there's going to be more news about him being fired and more of the reasoning why he was fired, you know, because all of that stuff will come to, to the surface one day and I'm guessing it's going to happen like right after I'm done recording and then this video is going to be obsolete. But this is what we know so far. This was strictly a Steve Ballmer decision. Uh, the owner, he, he talked to a bunch of people in the organization. He talked to Kawhi. He talked to Paul George. Uh-oh. Homeboy's leaving. All right, he doesn't like this topic. He talked to a lot of players in, in the organization, players included. And no matter what nobody said, he was hell-bent on firing Doc Rivers. Again, it makes sense. You do not blow two 20-point leads and close out games and think you're going to keep your job. So he made that decision. And one thing that is that is very interesting is like, yeah, he talked to Kawhi, he talked to Paul George, but let's keep it a buck. When you're a superstar of a team, what you say kind of goes, especially if you're a superstar of a team on the last year of your contract. So if Kawhi Leonard was talking to Steve Ballmer and he was like, no, I want Doc to be our coach, Doc would still be the coach right now. This means that he called Kawhi, he called Paul George, and he was just like, I don't care. Steve Ballmer can't afford to lose, though, guys. He gave everything to give these time, these guys time with the Clippers. So whatever they really say should be going, which means that they didn't say anything. They didn't defend Doc Rivers. None of the players have defended Doc Rivers so far. It's been 24 hours. Matres Harrell has been tweeting. None of it was like, not coach. Probably because he out of there too. Let's keep it a buck. Um, but you get what I'm saying? When the superstar player wants a guy to be their head coach, that's usually going to be the guy. When LeBron wanted Tyron Lou, Tyron Lou was the coach. That's just the way it is, especially considering Kawhi is on the last year of his deal. Whatever Kawhi says is going to be law with the Clippers. It has to be. Because if he walks and Paul George walks, what do you have? No picks and Zubach. That's your team. 
So it tells me that nobody nobody cared about Doc Rivers being around anymore. And it's funny because, like I mentioned, before he signed with the Clippers, he pointed at Doc Rivers and he was like, and I'm talking about Kawhi, he said, I want to play for you. And a lot of things have changed in a year. This Clippers team, when, when we uploaded those videos talking about how bad the Clippers were in this series, me, Rusty, every NBA YouTuber that created a video about the Clippers that night or the next day hit all-time numbers. We all were eating on that because the Clippers had turned themselves into villains without having any success. Think about all the fan bases that they upset. We can go down it. The Trailblazer fan base. You remember when, when Damian Lillard pointed at uh, Patrick Beverly in the bubble was like, I want you out here. The day missed the free throws, and then they were on the bench. Dame time, Dame time, Dame time. Everybody in Tra Portland Trailblazers fandom hates the Clippers. Cool. You remember when Marcus Moore stepped on Luka's foot? On his, his, his foot that he was hurt on, uh, everybody in, in Mavs fandom don't hates them now. And you know what? I fell in that too. I hate dirty plays and dirty players. And that immediately turned me off to the team. Immediately it turned me off to the team. And then you see them on Slam Magazine all swagged out. Who going to beat us? It, it rubbed people the wrong way. So we have this team undoubtedly with the talent to be a good team, to be a championship-level team. Again, they were the favorite for a reason, but they didn't back it up. So all of the people in NBA fandom are like, yes, we want to see them. <laughs> we want to see them fail to an extent. Maybe that's going a little bit far. But seeing all these misfortunes is not like, oh, I feel bad for the Clippers because they put themselves in this position. They put themselves into this position. So we already saw that Doc Rivers had been contacted by the 76ers and the, the Pelicans. <laughs> they didn't waste no time. They like, cause at the end of the day, Doc Rivers is a good coach. I will say that until he proves to me otherwise. He is a good coach. He may not be a great coach. And to win an NBA championship, unless you literally have two top whatever players, you need to be a great coach. I mean, there have been times where, like, now, now that the Clippers are out, people are coming to the light. We're talking about reporters and writers and stuff. And they're writing articles about um, why this Clippers team was unsuccessful. And one of the things that's been pointed out a lot is the misuse of Montrezl Harrell in the bubble. Montrezl Harrell was coming off an injury, and then he had to leave the bubble because his grandmother had passed away. May she rest in peace. So he came back to the bubble, and he was not in shape. He did not give it all on the defensive side of the ball, but because Montrezl Harrell was a sixth man of the year and he had the reputation over the season of being a very decent player, Doc Rivers kind of rolled with him in just hopes that one throughout the course of this bubble, he'll get it back on the defensive side of the ball. He'll have the same energy that we saw him have, and it never happened. And you have to look at yourself in the mirror when you're, when you're about to try to get out of a series, and you're like, you know what, maybe Montrezl hasn't been the reason. I mean, maybe Montrezl is the reason why we can't stop Jokic. Maybe Montrezl Hell was the reason why before Chris Stapps went down with an injury, they were looking so good. And then statistically, it, it says it too. I mean, the on-off numbers between when Zubac was on the floor and when Montrezl Hell was on the floor were dramatically different. We're talking about a plus 17 and then like a minus 15. The team was better with Zubac on the floor. And somehow Doc Rivers allowed it to be that, well, we're going with Montrezl. We're going with Montrezl. We're going with Lou Williams, even though every time we play against a good team, they find a way to get a switch onto Lou Williams. It's just different stuff like that. It's just a small X and O's. And at the end of the day, this was this was Blake Griffin who said this. And I don't remember where he said it. Um, maybe on a podcast. I don't really remember. He was like, coaching is like 95% dealing with egos. Right? It's like 95% dealing with egos. And that Clippers roster, that Clippers locker room, had a bunch of different egos from players that didn't even have the reputation of being winners. Kawhi didn't have an ego. Eh, his marketing campaign said it was his city. But I don't think that was Kawhi Leonard. I think that was New Balance. Like, hey, you're, you're good enough now. You're the guy in L.A. I think that wasn't Kawhi. I think that was marketing. Um, but he was the only winner in the whole roster, and he was the most quiet guy of them all. Everybody else was yapping. Paul George is yapping. Patrick Beverly, Montrezl. Everybody else in the organization on this roster was yapping at the mouth when none of them had done anything to be successful at that point. You know? So this next coach, I don't know who it's going to be. There's already rumors of, like, Tyron Lu. Um, Sam Cassell is already on the coaching staff, so maybe he gets promoted. But whoever it is has to get these egos under wraps. And maybe maybe this this terrible run that they just went on is going to be the reason why players don't talk as much this season as they did last season or something like that. But, I, I, I mean, I've seen Clippers fans just say, like, we're cursed. 
And you know what? I mean, the argument is there. Thinking about all the things that y'all have been through as a fan. Again, you the fans don't control what the heck Paul George says. They're just fans. All the stuff that y'all been through. I mean, the Lob City days, a few of those teams could have been championship contending teams. And then you have a Chris Paul quad injury. You have a Blake Griffin finger injury um, derails that. And then you get to this point and Paul George is not nearly the player that he was before. You know, you also have stuff like Kawhi Leonard's trainer taking shots of players, too. Kawhi Leonard's trainer, if you did not know, he's on he's on Twitter. I don't know his at, so I can't give you like the receipts, but I. I saw it on Twitter. Somebody screenshotted that. He's basically, he was talking trash about Montrezl Harrell. He basically said that uh, the Clippers need a dog like Dwight Howard. This was doing the series where Dwight Howard against Jokic was looking pretty good, talking about like game one. And, you know, he had his moments too when he got into that star lineup where he really flustered Jokic. So shout out to that. He was saying that the Clippers needed a dog like Dwight, not like one of the guys like Montrezl Harrell. Interesting. And he also said things along the lines as Paul George has one of the lowest basketball IQs I've ever seen. Again, Kawhi doesn't control what his trainer says. This is They have their own brains and platforms and stuff. But those are the type of stuff that is going on. And that's not even mentioning the things that are happening in the locker room, right? You remember the report came out right after they blew the 3-1 lead. Paul George stands up on some, like, remember the Titans type stuff and was like, don't worry, guys. Just come back next year and let's run it back. And they were like, players were like, mm. my trainer's like, mm, I got a bag coming from Charlotte probably. Bye. Uh, just, just everything just didn't. It didn't work out. It just didn't work out. And it's a prime example of, like, you can't just create a championship team like that. You're going to have the blueprint. And I think the blueprint is there for the Clippers. If, if next year they bring back pretty much the same roster and the next year the Clippers are champions, that wouldn't be a surprise to anybody because we know they have talent there. But it's more than just putting together a good group of basketball guys. It's, it's about the locker room personalities. It's about, it's about all of that stuff. And I think that is something that the Clippers kind of missed out on. I think that's something that the Clippers kind of missed out on. So, yeah, Doc Rivers is out, and we don't know what the future of the Clippers look like. But I have to say, whoever they sign, you better hope that Kawhi Leonard loves that boy. Because if he doesn't, you better hope Paul George loves that boy. Because if he doesn't, the Clippers are about to go right up to, right back into obscurity. Just like that. You have, you have two years, two years of being real contenders. And then if they leave, you're right back into obscurity, which is it's kind of trash. Thank you all so much. That's my Clippers. If you enjoyed it, leave it a like. Subscribe. I'm out.